Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, we have the latest beta release for the Axe FX3 featuring the new Cygnus X3 amp modeling. And I want to dive into an absolutely classic high gain amp. In fact, an entire amp series, the PV5150 models. And much like the real amp has had a bunch of different revisions at different manufacturers, we have different models in the Axe FX3, FM9, and FM3. We're gonna get started with the PVH6160 block lead. Before we do it, let's hear it in a mix. This is a little excerpt from the Ragdoll song, Letting Go. I'm using the 6160 block at these settings with my free cab IR, the rhythms are double tracked and the lead is a single stereo track with some pitch detune and delay. It sounds like this. Let's get started with the 6160 block model in here. These amps are of course the Eddie Van Halen signature amplifiers. When Eddie moved from PV over to EVH by Fender, PV continued to make the same amps as the 6505. And there are some 6505 models. There are models of the EVH 5153s, as well as the newer 5153 stealth models. But let's start with the original and what a lot of people will consider the best, the block model in here. The two main things I would recommend with this series of amps is do not be afraid to crank the presence controller. I've got it at 9.5 at the moment. Much like the real amps, the presence has quite a strange taper to it where it doesn't do much up until around nine. I like it at 9.5, twist it everywhere in those extremes until it works with your guitar and your IR. And I also like to keep the master volume below about three on these amp models. They mostly generate their sound from the preamp and there is so much gain on tap. We'll also hear them boosted. For now, I'm not gonna be using my free IR. We will hear that. I'm using a combination of the four by 12 recto straight Dyna cabs. I love this combination on here. We'll hear the free IR later in the video, but for now, I thought it might be nice so you can just hear it with some stock Dyna cabs. Uh, you can see the settings on here. I haven't touched any advanced settings. There's just a little bit of this recording Studio C reverb on here. It sounds like... <laughs> Classic for a reason that has so much clarity, so much gain, and such a great kind of mid range cut to it that, as we heard with the example earlier, just sits where heavy guitars need to sit on there. Hitting it with something like a Tube Screamer style drive, I'm using the Valve Screamer VS9, drive all the way down, level all the way up tone cranked up on here just kind of makes it work with any guitar you like if you've got a guitar with low output pickups don't be afraid to add a bit of drive and play around with the tone if you've got really high output pickups you might not need to crank the level quite as much for my guitar which is a prs ce24 with the 8515 pickups that works just fine. What I'm gonna do now is go through a few different variations of this. We'll hear the 6505, the 5153, and then the FAS take on the 5150, the FAS 6160. <laughs>
you can hear they've all got a very similar character, but the 6160 Plus at the same settings has a little less gain and a little more low end on there. It really likes the boost in there, whereas I feel like the 6160 Block and the FAS 6160 don't necessarily need that boost. The FAS 6160 just sounds like a boosted 5150. It's amazing. And then the 5153, this 100 watt blue model, kind of has the least gain, but it has what I would describe as maybe a slightly tighter, more exaggerated low end on there. So again, boosting it or just turning the gain up works really, really well. Let's check out a few more models in here because we'll go over to the Stealth models. I've loaded them into a second amp block. There are models of the Stealth Blue and Red channel. I love both of these kind of equally, but I found myself using the red a little bit more. We'll hear blue, then we'll hear red, then we'll also hear the crunch and the clean channel of the 6505 models in here. It's kind of like a math class here. There's so many numbers being thrown around, but I'll just go through the two stealths first so we can hear them side by side. Hear why I like the red so much in just a second, and then we'll hear the crunch and clean. <laughs> Again, different variations on the same theme. The crunch is quite bright and Marshall-ish. It's quite a generic style Marshall tone. And personally, if I wanted a Marshall style crunch, I'd use one of the Marshall models, like one of the Plexis or the excellent 2203 or 2204 models in there. However, if you're used to using a real 5150, those are gonna make you really happy. And then the clean, again, is totally serviceable. I would probably go for something like a Fender model or the Dumble ODS clean. If I was strictly playing an entire gig that needed to be clean, but if you wanted to say mix and match a clean sound for a few sections with these heavy sounds, much like on the real amp, they're voiced in a way which is gonna work with the other channels on there. But uh, for me, it's the Stealth Red and Stealth Blue that really, really hit the spot. And the Block Letter 5150, that's just such a classic amp for so many sounds out there, whether you're doing 80s rock, you're doing Van Halen, or you're doing like metalcore and melodic death metal, it will do so many things. The Stealth, again, different low end, more of a low mid focus in there. I like how kind of chewy and hairy it sounds and feels on there. So I'll let you hear it with my free cab IR linked in the video description. I'll chuck some big pitch detune and that dual delay on again so you can hear it. I'm gonna play you all out with the Stealth Red, one of my favorite amp models. Like when it comes to dirty amps, it's either number one or number two at the moment. Let me know which 5150 model you like the best in the current firmware. And if you have any comments or suggestions, just drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey.